everyone, I'm Chester44, and welcome to this Let's Play of Avernum 6. Last episode was pretty much just the start of everything. We work in the food depot when we just want to go out and help the world. Sadly, we can't, really. So, let's head upstairs. We were told to go upstairs to see if anything was needed by the one in charge. Let's go. Alright. You enter the main storage hall of the food depot. It's much warmer up here. The searing air from the volcanic vents miles to the east and west is b merely balmy by the time it blows out to here. The scent of sulfur is barely noticeable. The hall is full of crates of food. Soon these supplies will be carried by well-guarded caravans to where they are needed most. The very little food has been arriving lately. From here you can clearly hear the shouting and pleading in the audience hall. This is where Lieutenant Caitlin will be. Now you can go report to her and see if she needs anything. Yes, I know how to save. Go away. Fine, hold on. Okay, I just needed to open it. I know how to do it. You can also open up these and take a look inside here. There's some bread. Yes, I am taking food. Again, there's a reason. This is one of the food lockers normally kept full of sacks of high-quality mushroom meal. Before Sergeant Nickel gave it to you, you never had the key that unlocks it. The key is a valuable resource. You don't have any reason to open the locker, though. It could get you in considerable trouble. You leave it alone. You do your duty and keep the valuable food stored safely inside. There's wine in here. This is one of the food lockers normally kept full of sacks of high quality mushroom meal. Before Sergeant Nickel gave you, you know, okay. Much to your surprise, the door is slightly ajar. Looking inside, you find that the locker is empty. This is quite a surprise. The depot's supplies seem to be far scarcer than anyone has let on. Hmm. This is the upper barracks of the food depot, where the more experienced soldiers take turns sleeping in shifts. You immediately envy the warmth, cooking facilities, and lack of a gigantic yawning chasm. The moment you step inside, you feel your fellow Avernite's contempt wash over you. Sergeant Nickel thinks you deserve more respect. News of that hasn't gotten around. There are three privates in these barracks. While they technically don't outrank you, they've been here for a lot longer, and it gives them a superior attitude. The soldier concentrates on sharpening his blade and ignores you. Avernum has come far since the early days. Once in the film waged ceaseless war against the human intruders. Now that they have mostly been integrated into Aver Avernite society, their arrogance expresses itself in other ways. For example, this Nephil, Sergeant Kanan, has spent months working out his frustrations by ordering you around and belittling your every effort. Murr, it is a kit from your icy ho little hole. Why you bother, Kanan? Why you need my time? What are you doing? Waiting for orders. Or to go deal with the rabble. Not talk to you. Move on, kit. There's something I'd like to know. Sergeant Kanan's tail twitches with amusement. It is not my job to teach. That happens with Nicole down in your cold hole. Leave us before I give you a kick. As the other soldiers snicker, Kanan waves you away. <sighs> no respect. We get no respect. It says, keyboard shortcuts. I don't need to know about those. I already do. And that's a gate out. We can't leave. No. Bag of meal. Not gonna bother taking that. Mushrooms. I'll take those. You step through the side entrance into the audience hall. It is, as always, full of desperate Avernites, shouting and despair. When food rationing began and these depots were built, King Starus declared that each depot would have an audience hall, where the poor and hungry could make a case for an increase in their rations. While these petitions might have once worked occasionally, the answer these days is always no. But people still try. The best they can hope for is permission to use the portal to the surface sooner rather than later. Lieutenant Caitlin is sitting in her chair, listening to and dismissing petitions with great efficiency. The supplicants are unusually angry today, but guards hold them back. When she sees you enter, she waves for you to approach. I shall. Oh, there really is not much in the food depot here. Really full up here, though. There is a married couple petitioning for food right now named Penn and Belina, from what you can tell. You don't interrupt them. Based on the look on Caitlin's face, it isn't going well for them. There are a lot of Avernite citizens here, thin but not starving each waiting their turn to explain why they should get more rations or earlier use of the portal to the surface. 
Upon seeing an Avernite soldier, the supplicant says, I need more bread. My children, they're losing weight. They're sickly. Can you put in a good word for me, please? Sergeant Nickel told you what to do in these cases. Nod and move on. It's harsh, but you're not supposed to get personally involved. Lieutenant Caitlin has a secretary who records the details and results of every request, even though the answer is always no. He then puts his records on the shelves behind him. It's a tedious job, but it's far better than fighting off the savage slits in the Eastern Gallery. Lieutenant Caitlin is young for her rank, barely 25. Since the trouble started, the army has received a flood of recruits. Like, for example, you. Fortunately, Caitlin is extremely intelligent and has, and has risen through the ranks quickly, though denying food for, to so many people is taking a harsh toll on her. Her porcelain face has lines on it that weren't there a month ago. She efficiently dismisses a couple who is petitioning for another bag of mushroom meal. They move toward the east wall, and Caitlin turns to you. Ah, Nicholas sent you up to see if I need help. I'd like to ask something. She shoots a nervous glance at the crowd of hungry people inside and outside the audience all gates. This might not be a good time for idle conversation. Since you don't outrank her, you don't argue. Uh, yes, is there anything I can do up here? Lieutenant Caitlin starts to answer. As she begins to speak, a disheveled man shouts, Talk to us first! It's my turn! My turn! He runs forward. The other waiting people, seeing someone leap forward, surge after him. There is a brief melee. You help the guards calm the petitioners. Some noses are bloodied, but nobody is hurt. Hurt seriously, anyway. You return to Caitlin, who is wincing. Perhaps you should go help Sergeant Nickel downstairs. We are fine up here, we just need to get this lot cleared out. Alright then. I apologize. Let's move. Oh. You find an Avernite couple waiting for you in the in the hallway outside the, in, the audience hall. They aren't supposed to be back here. It's soldiers only. They must have snuck back here during the brief melee. You recognize them. They are Penn and Belina. They were being denied extra food when you first talked to Lieutenant Caitlin. The woman walks up to you, nervously twisting the front of her tunic with her hands. G greetings to you. I am Belina. This is my husband, Penn. I, I wanted to ask for your help. You seem brave and kind. Can you help? Didn't the lieutenant already deal with you? She did. She told us to wait and use the portal out, but we don't know how long it will be before our number comes up in the lottery, and we're losing strength. You look them over. There's, the standard rations have left them thin and pale, even by Avernon's standards, but they're in no danger of death, just a fair amount of discomfort. You have to get out of here. Go. It's hard, but it's necessary. Everyone wants more food these days. They don't put up any resistance. They don't cry or complain. They just shuffle out. There. Another job done. It's time to return to Sergeant Nickel. Cruel as it is, they aren't in critical... Con oh, dear. As you round the corner, you find another man who slipped into the back hall. He is nowhere near as docile as Belinda and Pin. You recognize him as the shouting man who started the near riot. You get a closer look at him. He is thin, twitching, and there are faint green stains around his mouth. He looks wild, almost deranged, and there is a sword in his belt. If he had it in the audience hall, it wasn't visible. He walks close to you without a scrap of fear. You can smell sweat and a faint medicinal odor. He points at the door to the east. Yo, I need meal. Two bags of it. I'll pay you fifty coins. Open the bin for me now. And why do you want it? N none of your business. I'll pay you all you need to know. Get it for me. I need it. Fast. What are the stains? You've never heard of Scribane? Doesn't matter. Who are you to judge me? You shouldn't be here. Get out of here. Have to have to have it. Need the money. Need to buy. Yes. You have a key, don't you? you Get the key. Grab the meal. Run. Nobody will. His eyes grow wilder as he speaks. And then he snaps. He whips his sword out. Sorry, nothing personal. Need the money. No. He lunges at you. He was going to sell it. Wonderful. This is the best you got. Down he goes. Oh, we got some bracers out of it. Alright. Let's speak to Nickel. Really is bad out there. You return to Sergeant Nickel, who is pacing nervously in the basement. After spending a year trying to build himself a refuge from the chaos outside, the recent intrusion into this cellar has left him unnerved. Ah, you're back. I'm glad. I don't think those rats you fought were the end of the problem. They were the beginnings. 
There was something in deep storage. I heard it. Lieutenant Caitlin didn't need assistance. Not surprising, but we needed to check. We have worse problems now, and they're our responsibility. There's something in deep storage? Yes, I'm certain of it. I went and looked at the bodies of the rats you killed. On the way back, I looked through the bars to deep storage. I saw shadows, and I clearly heard... something. Why didn't you investigate? <laughs> so young and foolhardy. Learn from my caution. I'm not mad enough to explore by myself. I waited for you to return. Never, ever go out alone. Can't argue with that. What is deep storage? It's a cold, low caverns where the bulk of our emergency supplies are kept, highly secure and under lock and key. Mark my words, when we're getting the supplies out of deep storage, things have got truly gotten bad. Uh, I encountered someone named Runkle upstairs. You describe your meeting with Runkle. Nickel nods. Green stains, eh? Sounds like a scribane addict. Hungry and dangerous. We're well rid of him. Scribane? A gift from the Empire. Once, it could only be grown on the surface. Makes it strong and fearless and immune to pain for a time. At first. Then it stops helping, but you find that you can't live without it. Some advice for you kids. Stay away from the stuff. Not a problem. What are my orders now? If vermin have infested deep storage, they must be driven out. The supplies down there might one day be the last bulwark between the Great Cave and starvation. Prepare yourself, but do it quickly. We make it. We must make haste. What is their plan? I'll unlock the gate. We'll rush in before the vermin has time to flee. You'll go southwest and slay anything interfering with the supply bins. I'll go north and secure the algae chamber. He anticipates your question. The algae chamber is pools of mold in it, kept fresh for the wizards of Patrick's Tower. I don't know what it's for. It smells like old socks. What do you think is back there? Probably just more rats. That would be bad enough, but... I have other suspicions. Just keep a blade handy and be ready for anything. Shouldn't we get help from upstairs? Nickel sighs. He would clearly like nothing more. <sighs> they have enough to worry about. And if we ask their help for just, just to deal with some rats... No, we'll get their help when we need it. No sooner. I'm ready to go. Are you sure? I don't want to rush ahead alone and end up with my pants down. Yes, let's go. The old soldier stands, shakes his limbs, does a little stretching, and readies his blade. All right, I'll lead. You follow. When we're in deep storage, I'll go north and you go southwest. Let's go spit some rats. With a final shudder, he leaves to the south. All right, let's move. Deep storage, keep out. You enter the deep storage caves. You've never been down here, and you don't think you have been missing much. It's very cold. The walls sparkle with countless tiny ice crystals, and every step makes a faint crunch sound. A lot of food is kept down here, in sacks and huge casts. The barrels to the south are labeled Salted Meat Service, with a date two years previous. There's an open gate to the southwest. That must be where you're meant to explore. You can hear faint squeaking, and a few sets of rat tracks are visible in the ice. Sergeant Nickel wasn't imagining things. Well, there's all that. For a moment, you see a trace of the old, cranky, demanding Nickel of your training. Why are you bothering? I have one day cave to search, you have another. Go clear it out. All right, all right, I'm going, I'm going. There's a wheel over there. You hear the rattling of chains behind you, followed by the sound of a descending portcullis. You try to run back, but it is too late. Someone managed to shut the gate behind you. You hear high-pitched laughter in the shadows. You aren't doomed. You saw the gate controls through a window as you were coming in. All you need to do is reach them. This large, dim chamber is full of rows of barrels. There are several rats at the far end, gnawing at a pile of frozen sacks of meal. That's not what really draws your attention. In the center of the room, a goblin is smashing in the end of a precious barrel of wheat flour with a hammer. Goblins aren't rats, but they have a lot of similarities. They breed quickly, they burrow, they love to steal food, and they get everywhere. The goblin hasn't noticed you yet, but he will soon. If goblins are down here looting the supplies, they need to be eliminated, or soon these caves will be picked clean. <laughs> All right, then. Charge in, kill that goblin. That was easy. Now we can work on the rats. Fortunately, I don't think it'll be that bad. Don't want you to wait, I'm going to shoot it. There we go. Okay, that's taken care of. 
The door in the east wall has a crude padlock on it. Perhaps something valuable is on the other side. Looks like it. What have we got here? We got... Speed potion, energy po- Okay, energy potion needs to go there. Another bronze short sword. Sandals, could use those. And a wooden shield. You take the energy potion. Not much else over there. More goblins! Get in there, we need to kill him. And more rats, of course. There goes that goblin. Looks like it dropped a ring. Nice. Alright, there's that one dead. Yep, another energy potion. And a gold ring that we can sell later. What was in here, by the way? Bags of meal for the most part, okay. Yes, I know. The goblins have started some javelins on the floor ahead. It's always satisfying to fling a few projectiles ahead before engaging in melee. I'm not gonna bother with uh, javelins, they're too heavy. That's a lot of goblins! Let's, uh, let's let them come to us, I think. Yes, that works. Tough goblins. Well, one of them is tough. No, I didn't want you to move there! Can't see that one. Get rid of that one while you can. There goes that one. That one's a little wounded. Ow. Come on, finish off this raider. He's a tough guy. Oh, he's fleeing in terror, and now he's dead. There are several more goblins here. They are furious that anyone would try to deny them all this glorious food. You can see how they got in here. There is a tiny tunnel to the south, only recently excavated by the dirty little creatures. A lone goblin stands in the tunnel, staring at you. He is taller than the others and covered with jewelry. Gaudy necklaces, costume rings, and pretty much every glittery object the creature could find. He points a long rapier at you and says, Lord Trinket claims this food for all goblin kind! Really, I do! Servants, destroy them, and bring the food to me! These foes look more challenging than the enemies you have met so far. Don't forget that you have healing potions in your pack. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Well, we already kind of killed all your men, and you did nothing, so, uh... Did he just run? He ran! What the hell? Blessed bauble, that's useful. Dagger can sell. More food. Hey! Hey, where the hell? Get back here! You squeeze your way down the goblin tunnel, feeling very vulnerable and claustrophobic. Fortunately, no ambush awaits you at the far end. There's only an entry into another set of tunnels sealed off by a massive iron portcullis. It can't be opened from this end. To avenge yourself on Trinket and his goblin horde, you'll have to find a different route to the other side. The damn bastard! Got away. Ugh. We'll find him eventually. Alright, put on the belt. Take the food. Let's see, we got coins. Fiery wand. Return life school! Already? Wow! And some gloves. So there's that. And there's some sandals. Looks like that's about it now in here. You use the wheel to open the gate. Then you wait to rock in the mechanism to prevent anyone from locking you in again. Okay then. That's that, I suppose. Let's get out of here. 
Yeah, go ahead. Let's head back. Wait until you find out what we found. You return to Sergeant Nickel, who is pacing nervously in the basement. After spending a year trying to build himself a refuge from the chaos outside the re Oh, wait, we've already read that. There were goblins back there. One of them called itself Lord Trinket. I killed most of them. You describe the battle to Sergeant Nickel. He isn't surprised. I had my suspicions. I'm surprised we kept those vermin out as long as we did. He thinks about what to do next. He soon comes to a conclusion. He doesn't like it. I don't like this, but we have no choice. I tried. I did. I'm sorry. What? What happens now? Go upstairs. Talk to Lieutenant Caitlin. Tell her what is happening. She will select someone to help with the problem. I hope... I'm sorry. What's wrong? Why do you keep apologizing? I tried to make a secure place down here, safe from... I've seen what can happen out there, how ugly things can get. I... I'm sorry. Getting sentimental in my old age. The lieutenant needs to know what is happening. Go talk to her. He turns away. Hey, three of us leveled up. One of us did not. Probably due to... I don't know. Something. Alright, you... I, Michael, improve your tool use more. I want more tool use. Anar? Hmm. You know what? Improve your pre-spells, I suppose. I don't... Uh, yeah, I want to get pre-spells to 8. Mage spells 2. Get them to 8, I think that'll be fine. Alright, upstairs we go. Let's speak with her. You wait for Lieutenant Caitlin to dismiss another petitioner. Then she turns to you. Yes, anything else? I need to report to you about the goblins downstairs. This gets Caitlin's full attention. She turns away from the supplicants and listens as you describe to her what happened downstairs. She looks worried, then furious. Thank you for reporting this to me. The situation is growing urgent. Now I must send someone to deal with it. We have known for some time about the colony of goblins to the south led by Trinket. This Trinket. But until now, they have never caused real trouble. Now they must be dealt with. Nicholas says that you are capable. Let's test this. I will instruct the soldiers to let you out of the keep. Go south. The goblins reside in an abandoned mine. Find Trinket. Kill him. Do this for me, and you may have a promising career ahead of you. Tell me more about Trinket. The dirty little beast calls itself Lord Trinket, but I will not flatter such a pest. We know his name because he actually sent a goblin to demand tribute from us. That envoy Skell sits outside our gate. Apparently, the creature has somehow obtained some magical items. It makes it more dangerous than usual, but it is still a goblin. You should be able to deal with him. Trinket is in an abandoned mine? Yes, a promising crystal mine to the south. Then half the miners won the right to return to the surface in the lottery. The rest dispersed, leaving their remaining prizes behind. Now it is simply a gathering place for vermin. I have to kill him? Of course. Maybe in a gentler time we can try to forge peace with goblin kind. This is not such an age. We need to protect our remaining food supplies. Can I have some supplies? That seems reasonable. There's a box of equipment in the barracks. I'll have it unlocked for you. Also, be sure to collect some rations before you depart. Within reason. Remember, every bite you take comes out of someone else's mouth. Can I get any assistance? Mm, I think I heard reports of a bounty hunter collecting goblin ears down there. The name was Vanderin. Travel along the road and watch for him. He might help out. For his own reasons, of course. Alright, thank you. Alright, a box in here. Here we go. Another wooden shield. More gloves. An ice bolt scroll. Curing potion. And a bronze spear. Oh, you can't use that. Okay, fine. Now you can use it. Yeah. You can only use one. You will be using the spear. And you need that shield. Alright. How beautiful. No, nothing here. There. Alright, let's take a look out in here. Well, there's some stuff. Not long ago, some magical technicians came from the castle to create this stone pylon. You asked Sergeant Kanan what it was for. He told you to shut up and stay away from it. Being near it makes your hands, hair stare on, stand on end. You feel a powerful compulsion to walk up and touch it. Touch! You rest your hand on the stone obelisk. A shock of energy runs up your arm. A flickering orb of power appears on top, slowly rotating. 
There are two caravan guards here, trading a bottle of mushroom ale back and forth before leaving on their next run. The looks on their faces tell you just how foul the beverage is. Soldiers and overnight guards generally don't get along well. You nod cordially to each other, but that's it. More petitioners there. There's a caravan master in the courtyard, hovering protectively near her two wagons. They are loaded with sacks of dried mushroom meal, due to be delivered to somewhere in the Great Cave. When she sees you, she gives you a little bow. Greetings, soldier. I am Domin Dominica. I do not need any aid. I am only waiting for my escort, and then my little caravan will depart. Where are you going? I am on the Darman Run. I carry food there when it is needed, and I bring back the surplus when they have it, or when they manage to grow something. It's a simple run, only a day's journey, and usually not threatening. Where is Darman? About a day's travel to the west, and the roads are decent. It's one of the few cities in Avernum that is still mostly at full strength. The rest of them are slowly emptying out, going back to the surface, you know. What do you need to do, uh, to do before you go? Wait for my guards to finish their drinks, and then fetch the lizards, hitch them to the wagons, and bandage all the wounds we got hitching them up. <laughs> do you meet many monsters along the way? A few, though they tend to have the good sense to stay away from the road. The Great Cave is nowhere near as safe as it used to be. When so many soldiers went northeast to fight the Sliths, well... She shakes her head. So we're in the Great Cave. Dominica is checking her wagons before departure. You notice that her forearms are covered with faint scars. In Avernum, that is a sure sign of someone who frequently works with giant lizards. Will you have an escort? Of course. Food caravans always have escorts. The way things are out here is necessary, and getting more so every day. Is there a real risk of attack? She looks at the wagons. Those bags of meal are worth a fair amount of money which draws brigands, and some people feel entitled to more than their fair rations, and some of those people are armed. I haven't been attacked yet, but some have. How bad are things out there? Not so bad. King Stars has done well with the rationing. Everyone is uncomfortable, but nobody is starving. It will be close, but I think we will send enough people through the portal to prevent any great suffering among those who remain. Can you tell me about the Great Cave? The largest tavern in Avernum. There are still two major cities left, Darman to the west and Almaria to the east. And of course, the castle just in the north. It's still the safest place to be in all of Avernum, though not by as warm a margin as it used to be. There's Flosk and Nest. Aren't they still around? Well, there we are. Portal Keep, I'm guessing that's where teleportation's gonna be. Patrick's Tower is still there. There's Fort Remote, the Western Reach is nothing there. Fort Emerald and Fort Saffron are there as always. Spire Fortress. The Abyss, as it always was. Where Erica's Tower used to be. Oh, there's some sort of tower up there. And a fortress. What the hell is over here? Let's see. Uh, the Great Portal. The Tower Col- that's where everyone's getting out of here. Tower Colony, Honeycomb, Myrtis, Silvar, Kotra, Fort Dranlon, Fort Devno, Horned Gate? That's new. Occupied Lands. Oh dear me. What the hell happened up in the Northeast Tunnels? And what happened to Vermello? I always loved being in there, but what's it like now? Fort Draco must be overrun. Fort Monastery and Grindstone? Hell only, heaven only knows what's going on with them. Oh, dear me. One more person to talk to. You stopped by to see Orvis. In happier times, she was a traveling tinker. Now that the Great Cave has become so dangerous, she spends most of her time here, trading and bar bantering with the soldiers and petitioners. When you get close, she waves you over. Yes. Yes. Orvis has good new things for you. You go out, yes? On mission, yes? Good armor is difference between life and... the other thing. Let me see what you have for sale. Pretty much all the sorts of stuff we'd expect. Low-level crap. Nothing we need. But we have some things we can sell. Interesting the way it works. You just click on... Oh, no, don't click like that. Fortunately... You can click again so you don't sell it, and it doesn't sell until you leave the window. How is business? Is good. Much bartering, many good deals, many in Avernum willing to trade useless trinkets for food and weapons. Our hard times, and Orvis helps them through. Where do you get the food? Trade it for the 
trade for it from those with enough, those who catch fish or and hunt lizards. Only crops fail. Is still meat. Well, I suppose it makes sense, but in history has shown that in hunter-gathering societies, gathering helps out a lot, and hunting is not always the best. So you take possessions of desperate people and give them food in return. And weapons. Do not make it sound like Orvis is cruel. I take from them things they don't need and give them things they need. They are thankful Orvis is there. Much worse if Orvis is not. Orvis constantly wipes off and rearranges the goods scattered on the thin blankets around her. Ah, you come to trade, yes? Good, good! Orvis makes special deal for a Vernum soldier. I'm going out on a mission. Can you help me? Of course! Orvis always gives discounts to Grave Warrior of Avernum, and they let Orvis stay here. Orvis but wants to help. And we appreciate it. Orvis gives you a toothy smile. See what I have to sell now? Because he's a merchant, he won't just give us things. Do you know anything about the savage slips, Arakai? She lets out an angry hiss. Do not ask me of them. Murderous. Seizing the cities. Killing good soldiers. Trying to take all Eastern Gallery. They are horrors. I hope Avernum destroys them all. If not, when they come here, they kill me as sure as you. That's all I need. Orvis thanks you and wishes you safe travels. Well, okay then. N that, I'm going to end this episode here. Next episode... We'll step outside and start trying to find our way around. As we saw on the map, down south is where we're going to need to go. We may eventually take a look to the west, though. And then probably the castle and... Oh! The Great Cave! We're starting in here! It's always nice. I mean, Fort Monastery, we could easily just find our way south and we knew where to go to get to Grindstone and then come up. And it was a nice, easy path. When we started in... Where else did we start? Oh yes, uh, Vernum. We were kind of able to go western through the eastern gallery and then back east and were able to explore elsewhere. There was one other I remember that I think took place in Aver down in Vernum here. I can't remember where it started. Oh, I'm bad. Eh, no matter. Was it... No, it wasn't the Empire. Eh, no matter. This time... I don't know. We'll need to figure out where we can go. Because we can go east, we can go west. All I know is I want to explore the entirety of the Great Cave before I go anywhere close to down here or up into the Abyss. Which I doubt we're going to go to anytime soon. Here we might look at, though, but not the Abyss. Not not now. We'll see. And definitely not the Western Reaches, or definitely not up here. Those are going to be hell, I imagine, anyway. But next, but we got to head and deal with the goblins first. That'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I am Chesterk44. That is uh, Ortas... Michael, Anar, and Rika. This has been an Avernum 6 Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.